Hello everybody, my name is Boski Savla. I'm a technical marketing manager at VMware focusing on cloud native applications. And today we are going to take a look at VMware Cloud PKS and Smart Clusters. VMware Cloud PKS is a service from VMware that provides managed Kubernetes cluster on a public cloud provider of your choice. It does so by giving you a simple control plane that you can use to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters across multiple clouds. Now, VMware Cloud PKS makes it super simple, both from a dev perspective and an ops perspective, to get a Kubernetes cluster up and operational. Now, from a developer perspective, you know, VMware Cloud PKS will uh, uh, eliminate the need to determine the capacity, uh, what kind of um, worker nodes, master nodes, how many do I need, what instance types do I need uh, for a particular cloud uh, to support my cluster. At the same time, from an operational perspective, it also takes care of providing the backend infrastructure needed to support a highly available Kubernetes cluster. It will make sure that the Kubernetes cluster that it's provisioning in whatever public cloud you determine is highly available for that specific region. Uh, uh, it also takes care of the backend infrastructure, like networking needed. I know how are my pods connected together? What networks do I need to wire things together up? Uh, VMware Cloud PKS takes care of all of this. So in short, getting a Kubernetes cluster with VMware Cloud make, uh, PKS is super simple, uh, and you typically get a you know an active Kubernetes cluster running within maybe a couple of minutes of triggering the cluster create. So let's see how this works. Now, let's say you have a dev team so um, that needs a Kubernetes cluster. And on day zero, they're requesting for a cluster or day one. And um, they talk to the VMware Cloud PKS via API or CLI or even the UI. And they, they are basically giving two things. One is the public cloud provider that they want the cluster to reside in. Two, um, the region within the public cloud provider they want the cluster to be in, and then what to call the cluster itself. Once this information is passed on to VMware Cloud PKS, VMware Cloud PKS will then talk to that public cloud provider. Um, let's say um, this is AWS. It will create a shadow account for this uh, for your uh, for the customer if you don't already have one and that account will be completely transparent to the end users so um, they don't have to manage any existing accounts or worry about that and then it will provision uh, appropriate networks needed in case of AWS um, it will create a, a VPC or it will use a specific number of EC2 instances, bind it to this VPC to ensure you get pod networks and uh, master node and worker node networks up and ready. And then within that particular region, VMware Cloud PKS will take advantage of multiple availability zones. So let's say this is AZ1, AZ2, and AZ3. And it will create a master node for that cluster in each and every zone. So let's say this is master for version 1.12. It will deploy these three different masters in each and availability zone to make sure that the cluster is always highly available. Now, all these three masters are running in active active mode at this point. Once the initial set of master nodes uh, for that cluster have been created, VMware Cloud PKS will then provide back the k 8 API uh, to talk to. So this way, uh, the dev teams can start talking directly to the cluster using a CLI like Cube Control, or even through the UI that's provided via VMware Cloud PKS or to, to the Kubernetes dashboard. Now, once that's done, as dev teams start deploying 
applications, um, you know, they can directly talk to the cluster through, Q through Cube Control or the K8 dashboard. And they'll start provisioning uh, pods or containers within those pods to this cluster. And what VMware Cloud PKS will do is it will start provisioning worker nodes to make sure um, that the pods uh, are getting scheduled appropriately. Now, as more and more pods start coming in, uh, VMware Cloud PKS will ensure that there are corresponding worker nodes created to ensure that there's no pod waiting to be scheduled for compute capacity. So it's automatically scaling the cluster out as workloads start coming in uh, and more capacity is needed. Now, it will do so even uh, to scale down. So let's say there was a batch operation that ran and it created a lot of pods within this cluster and now um, the batch operation is done and the pods have been deleted. Uh, what VMware Cloud PKS is doing at that point is it's constantly monitoring uh, the number of pods scheduled versus the number of worker nodes in that cluster and will start to decommission any worker nodes that are not needed. Any pods on that worker nodes will then be rescheduled to an existing worker node. So that way the cluster size is always optimal based on the workload that the cluster is running. So this is kind of day one auto scaling. Um, now, on a day two basis, let's say um, a new version of Kubernetes rolls in and you want to upgrade your cluster to that particular version. So you simply talk again through the uh, v VMware Cloud PKS API or CLI or even the UI and trigger an upgrade And VMware Cloud PKS will start applying a rolling upgrade to this cluster. And the way it does that is it will first bring in a new master node in one of the availability zones of a new version, let's say 1.13. And it, once it has backed up the old master node, applied the backup copy to this new master node, it will decommission the old master node to make sure that the new one is taking over. Once it's done with that, it will similarly apply all these upgrades to a different, uh, to all the different master nodes available in all the different AZs. So this is upgrading 1.13 um, from 1.12. Now once it's done this with all the master nodes in the three different availability zone, it will start applying these upgrades to the worker nodes as well. It will bring in a new worker node. It will ensure that the worker node has joined the cluster. It will decommission one of the worker nodes and Kubernetes takes over at that point and um, it will schedule the pod to the new worker node that's attached to the Kubernetes cluster. So this is day two operations, ensuring that uh, any upgrades, any version changes that um, Kubernetes brings in, you're always staying on the latest and up, uh, greatest uh, uh, version for Kubernetes. Now, VMware Cloud PKS also supports the backend worker nodes, master nodes that uh, are used to provision uh, this or uh, to create the cluster. And VMware Cloud PKS and uh, the operations team is ensuring that the operating system running on these different nodes is always patched, is constantly patched, uh, and has all the vulnerability security patches applied to ensure that the cluster uh, is running in a secure state. So um, that's all about VMware Cloud PKS Smart Clusters. Thank you.